inside the case modding world of Gruntville.com. Plus, be the ultimate gamer by adding the best mouse to your arsenal. And Yoshi is at it again, going sleepless, working on his racing addiction mod. Look at those beautiful feet. Live from Tech TV Studios in San Francisco, it's the Screensavers. Woo! I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Yoshi. Thanks for joining us on the Screensavers. Kevin and Sarah are on their way to Tennessee, so I'm filling in. Yoshi D. Herrera, right? Yoshi D. Herrera. Yeah, yes. it's like, uh, and I am Yoshi. Well, you know, you got to go with that single name thing. It's scary. <laughs> Benefactor of the mods and protector of the tools. Today is the last day of Mod Week. We've got some pretty cool stuff we've all seen this week tonight. No different. We've got one more guest modder with his fire case. And Yoshi, you have an out of control racing. It's sort of a. It's 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 beyond a mod, I think. Yeah, it's it's kind a of simulator? a simulator, an addiction, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Yoshi's going to lose a lot of room in his living room next week. What living room? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, that's right. You're in a studio. Joshua's not going to be able to get to his bed from the front door, but excuse me, Yoshi's not going to be able to get to his bed from the front door. But Joshua, how was E3? E3 was. Awesome. For those of us who don't know what E3 is, it's, what is it's, E3? It's probably, the, I would say it's the world's biggest video game conference. Every, th every piece of software, every console, every game, every gadget that relates to gaming, people show it off there and show it off to the world. And It was awesome. There was so much, I would say the interesting thing was, is I would say it was about 60, 40, 45, or 55, 45 consoles. Really? More consoles than... Than, PC, games? Uh, PC games. What about the Mac Linux gaming contingency? I don't. Will you have those operating systems? <laughs> so I don't even care. But ne the next week I'm going to show you uh, some of the highlights, some of the biggest games that were there, and then of course my favorite picks, which are a little different. Very cool. We look forward to that. Good, good stuff. And Foo, are you in the nook? I am. Joshua got to go to E3, and uh -huh. you didn't. Uh -huh. I didn't get What'd to you go. Do? Well, we, you didn't like video games, we thought. What? I set up the LAN party. That's oh. my job. Okay, well, next time. But anyways, uh, give me a call. Uh, the phone number is 888-989-7879. You can also email us at the screensavers at techtv.com. And don't forget, if you have a net cam, you get a free screensavers t-shirt, which is not so bad. Right, guys? Like that. Free stuff for the net cam callers. Right now, it's time for the tech news. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the dabber worm is riding the coattails of the now infamous sasser worm. Michigan-based firm LRUHQ, or Lurk, published an analysis online Thursday. Their findings suggest that dabber's code actually spreads by searching for and infecting computers that have already been infected by sasser. It's really odd. Basically, it goes in, it sees there's sassers there, it piggybacks on some flaws in the sasser code, erases all traces of it, and installs a back door. What's that mean? It means a hacker can gain control of your system and use it to distribute stuff, upload stuff to it, use it for massive denial of service attacks. Patch your system, clear out any remains of the sasser worm. This is the first of some ugliness involving the sasser worm, and it's only going to get worse over time. Just because the Kita Road it's been caught doesn't mean sasser's not going to be out there and doing nasty stuff. Yeah, because you got all these like you know these people being lazy with their coding and picking up on the sasser worm instead of writing something from scratch. I don't know. I think it's pretty clever. <laughs> if you know there's 11 million systems out there, or uh, even a million no, it's, it's or a few hundred thousand, so you can do some nasty stuff. Uh, not that we like it. We like that. Well, patching stuff we like. Pa like patching, don't like viruses. Worms. So what's up next, Josh? So XPRIZE frontrunner Spaceship One launched on Thursday and reached the edge of space, making it the first private crewed vehicle to reach, reach nearly 41 miles above the planet's surface. Wow. The XPRIZE competition has a $10 million prize. In order to win, the team must fly a vehicle big enough for three into suborbital space 62 miles twice within two weeks. Spaceship One was 21 miles short. That's a pretty good start, though. Yeah. If you saw the picture it's there, it's farther than anyone else has come so far. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's actually Burt Rutan's company actually built that. And the ship you saw, the larger ship, basically flies up, launches the smaller ship, which will take off like a rocket. See that big pod in the middle there? Will basically rocket off of there. The one in the lower right-hand corner that'll make the trip into space and do the re-entry, similar to the space shuttle. That they've got a vehicle that's designed to be launched and then land under its own power. That's it's going to be amazing. Pretty interesting stuff. I can't wait until the first team actually completes it. Then we'll start seeing some really fun stuff. Yeah, I bet it happens this year. Speaking of happening 
this year. Yahoo announced yesterday that it would be upgrading from 4 megs to 100 megs for their free email members. They deny that it had anything to do with the announcement of Google's new Gmail services, which promises to provide 1 gig of free space. It's in beta right now. Premium subscribers to Yahoo Mail, who currently pay between $20 and $50 annually for 20 megabytes to 100 megabytes of space, will receive virtually unlimited capacity, which I think is PR speak for a gigabyte of storage should <laughs> Google I actually ship. Up with that idea. Uh, you know what? It'll be interesting to see, you know, Google's in beta on the Gmail, but, you know, we don't know if it's going to become a, you know, a, a pay for product, if it's going to be free. It's going to be interesting to see. I would think with a gigabyte, open. that's a lot of space. It'll probably become a pay for, in my opinion, right. down the road. We'll find out. And Yahoo apparently is watching with bated breath to see what Google does with their email service. That's good, though. So in theory, if Gmail ships and Yahoo backs up what they've done, I'll get virtually unlimited storage on my 25 megabyte account. True, and I'll have to open one because I actually don't use Yahoo anymore because it was just filled with spam. I let it go. Just like Hotmail? Just like Hotmail. See, I've actually found they're pretty good at keeping spam out. No, I gave up. I haven't checked my Yahoo mail in probably a year. Mm, they probably closed it. They probably did. Andrew joins us on the Tech TV. Should we thank each other for reading the news? Sure. <laughs> thank you, Yoshi. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs> on the Tech TV Cam Network from Honolulu, Hawaii. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Hi. Hey, Andrew. How are you doing, man? I'm good. We gotta we gotta pick up the energy. Are you excited? <laughs> are you thrilled? Do you have a Just great a question for us? Yes. What's your question? Yeah, I'm looking to get a gig of RAM, mm -hmm. and I would like to know what would be compatible with the AMD 64. Well, it was like nine different kinds of memory that are compatible with the AMD 64. Which uh, do you know what motherboard you're running? Uh, the A. 530N HP Pavilion. Oh, you're right. Okay, so let me let me say. First of all, let's take a look. Right, we got the AMD Athlon web page up here. You know, it's basically depending on how the memory is set up. You could have PC 3200, 2700, 2100, or PC 1600, depending on what motherboard you're running and how you're running the processor. Right. What you need to do, young Jedi, is you're going to go over to something like Kingston, right? And you're going to go into memory search, and you're going to go down here to HP. I'm assuming, of course, you haven't done this already, right? Okay, so we're going to go to Hewlett Packard, and we're going to go to Find. And which model number is that again? Uh, A530N. A530N. <laughs> yeah, everyone have one of those moments where you realize that like HP makes a lot yeah, of systems. Yeah, they like using the okay, same letters. Okay, we're up to A340, A400, A475. What? Like scrolling through text, too. It's nice and fun. So where is it again? A530? Yes. People at home are going, this is amazing. I never knew they could do this 30 on television. 30N. 30 30N. We like that. <laughs> You're telling me, the person my headphones telling me. <laughs> I'm well, a little slow this year. Next thing is going to come up in a couple seconds. It's going to tell us exactly what kind of memory you can load into your system. How much memory do you have in it now? Uh, 512. 512. So basically, you could probably drop in a second 512 megabyte module. Um, and there you have it. Basically, they'll give you the X. Along with their part numbers, what they'll also do is if you click over here, you can find out exactly what it is. AMD Athlon 64, 3200, PCI. And it should give you the memory speed that's running inside of there. So, whoops. We don't need the Government Services Administration schedule unless you're buying for the feds. You can but, also go to uh, cru a Crucial yeah. or other places like that. Basically, and that's the nice thing is all the memory companies, Andrew, if you have a system that was pre-made for you, you know, if you bought it from Dell or from anybody else, any of the major memory manufacturers is going to have a search thing. It'll tell you exactly what memory to look for. If you have your own motherboard, you can find the listings of the motherboard manufacturer to tell you what kind of memory you can use in the system. But basically, yeah, it's, it's uh, you're good to go. Okay, bud? Okay. Good luck, man. Good luck. He doesn't sound very excited. Uh, you know, I, I guess memories is not too exciting for some people. You know, <laughs> you try it, Andrew. Hey, I like memory even more, better. It's bigger. a good thing. Can we see? Do we have the T-shirt? Example T-shirt. I can see you eagerly waiting to throw that at me. This is the T-shirt that Andrew won. Hopefully, that will render him some excitement. Oh, he's getting one of the old school ones. Yeah, we got the old school Ooh, one. Those are short supply. We're just getting started. Yoshi's got a well, a sweet little mod for you. And up next, we're going to check out modern John Crump's work and get a look at case modding and the community created called Gruntville. It's coming up when the screensavers continue. G4 Tech TV, coming May 28th. Stay connected. Weekends on Tech TV. Back-to-back -back hell. Isn't that cool? Back-to-back -back information. Burn your recorded shows right to a DVD. Back-to-back -back fun. <laughs> Start things off with Call for Hell. It's really about having fun. Then continue on with the screensavers. This is the show where we rip apart, analyze, and devour anything related to technology. Scary, huh? All the help and information you need. Saturday afternoon starting at 1 and Sunday morning starting at 10. Only on Tech TV.
exploding mod week graphic scares me. Right now, though, Yoshi has a website about his passion for modding. He's not the only one with a passion for modding created a website. Our next guest, John Crump, founded the popular mod website, Gruntville.com, and joins us now to show off, well, you can see the beginning of it, one of his mods along with his website. Welcome to the screensavers, John. You're like, you're one of Yoshi's heroes. How did you, how did you start modding? I started modding uh, basically on an upgrade, playing games, uh, love Unreal Tournament, and mm -hmm. decided I wanted to, my case to look a little bit different. So, so uh, your, your land party and had to show off a little bit? Exactly, exactly. Um, from there, I just kind of caught a bug, and uh, mm -hmm. actually Grunt was my old dog, and he passed away, and I decided to do a theme case, and Grunt the case came around, yeah. and questions came from out of the woodwork, and decided to start a forum, and couple years later, the site's grown to what it is today. So you made a commemorative grill here of Grunt that you brought in for us. That is correct. To, to show off. So that's him immortalized in fan. In stainless steel and laser cutting. Very we nice. like it. Yes. Grunt was a, was, was that your dog? Yeah, he was an English bulldog. Old college buddy of mine. <laughs> Very cool. This so what did you bring for us today? This is fire. Uh, this is a, a new thing we're doing on the site called Group Theme Mods. Uh, basically, we take a, a topic such as the seven deadly sins. This one is from the elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, the members of the forums just pick a mod they want to do. Um, one of the ones that's uh, cracking me up now is Sloth. I think there's some uh, remote cup holders <laughs> coming in that one. Is that part of like the seven deadly sins? It or is. The, or the fuzzy, scary, slow-moving <laughs> animal? It is. There's also the four horsemen going. And so, there's uh, places available, too, so if there's modders out there, they can join in and say they want to do one. Right. Are you running into problems with other people going, hey, I want to do fire, too, you know? I, I haven't yet. Um, actually, I came up with a flame design prior to this one, and somebody stole it the day I posted it, so I changed oh. the design, but it worked out for the better. I like these a lot better. <laughs> well, they weren't being original anyway. You got to refine it a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, I actually uh, hand-drew the hand drew these flames. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do the paint. There's a guy in Kansas City did all the paint on the case. It's just a phenomenal job. What did you do to cut out the shape of the flame? I uh, used a jigsaw for the most of the shape and then used a Dremel to shape it and sand it and finalize the design. Very cool. Very, very yeah. cool. We went with the uh, Inovatec cooling system in it and wrapped mm -hmm. some uh, silk around the radiator. Oh, you the can fans. see the silk flapping in the background there. And the, it gives it the nice motion effect. You yeah, should hold does. up your it hands. Makes... What are you using for, for dye in there? In the... Uh, the pink fingers. Yeah. Uh, stuff. <laughs> it's actually a, a red powder and it uh, is actually UV reactive. Um, there's not enough UV light in it now to make it really shine, but there will be. We understand the UPS guys were playing kickball with this before they dropped it off. <laughs> yeah, actually I did. I, it has a couple super glued pieces now, uh, <laughs> but nothing was hurt major. Hey, thanks, uh, Brown Truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, one of the other things is the uh, modular power supply in these is fantastic. Uh, frozen CPU threw that out. Basically, it comes pre-sleeved, okay. um, and you can just order your cables to any length. You can buy a power supply they have or actually send them your own. So you spec it out, you say, hey, I want 20-inch uh, cables on there or 4-inch cables. Exactly. You that's amazing. Exact so that's why it has the, it the orange it. cables under there. Basically, so the power supply, custom ordered, and then you actually pick the color of the cables on that? And the heat shrink. Um, that's awesome. And this one's a PC power cooling. You can get any brand you, li any brand you like. Nice. Is that expensive? or? A no, they're really reasonable. Normally like 40, 50 bucks more than a normal PSU. Okay. What you'd spend in sleeving anyway. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and you, don't, you save the time. Exactly. <laughs> why reinvent the wheel, right? So when did you start Gruntville? Uh, Gruntville started uh, a little over, right at two years ago, uh, about two years and a week ago. Uh, we started up just as a forum. Uh, now it's grown to a large hardware review site. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do a lot of giveaways. Right now we have uh, one of our great sponsors, MNPC Tech, threw up a fantastic Gruntville-themed case, uh, and that's going away to one of our readers this month. Uh, the forums are really active. We hang around in the work log section a lot. It gives us a lot of ideas. Yeah, I, I browse through there once or twice, you know, looking for ideas and inspiration. Yeah, there's um, a lot in there. How did the Gruntville name come about? I know, I think it has something to do with your dog, it I hear, does. but... Uh, Grunt was known for knocking beers over at parties we had. And, <laughs> Grunt uh, the bulldog. Grunt the dog. And uh, sooner or later it became Grunt Man because I was told I could drink as much beer as he could. <laughs> uh, and then we did the Grunt the Case, which was uh, probably my most popular mod I've done. Uh, just flooded me with emails and questions of how'd you do this, how'd you do that, and so I started the forums. Very cool. Uh, from there, it was uh, just crazy. It grew like grew like a weed. Very nice. So I hear you have a mod on, on there that you want to you want you want to put some attention to. That I do you think people it's, need uh, to see. It's definitely one of my favorites right now. Uh, the modder is Hobbs, and uh, he's not real well known, but I'm sure he will be once this mod's complete, if that ever happens. 
he's been working on about a year now. The mod is Stormbringer, based on the novel. Uh, basically, it's still in its halfway done stage. You can see sort of the design, the design cues coming in now. His woodworking skills are phenomenal. Um, these mesh channels here are actually going to be to hide wires, and they'll be lit up with red LEDs all throughout it. Oh, and really? The really? Attention cool. to detail is phenomenal. And what is this? That is the PSU cover. Uh, <laughs> the PSU cover on it. He uh, st he's done this three times now because he didn't like the design. He's somewhat of a perfectionist. Uh, first he did styrofoam claws, uh, moved on to something else, and now he's actually done these, molded them himself, uh, similar to uh, Crimson Sky's work. But the power supply has a lot of detail. Modder's mesh in between, there's actually a ruby ring on one of the claws, and it all goes with the theme of the novel. Very it's cool. It's a phenomenal work. Very cool. Any, anyone other than uh, Hobbs that you think people should uh, check out that have some oh, mad skills? Definitely. Uh, you'll definitely want to check out Mashy, Corrugated, Crimson Sky, uh, Dick Nervous. Uh, the Chronic, there's a ton of them out there. <laughs> Why do they, uh, here's a dumb question, why don't any modders use like their normal people names? Is it all because uh, of the registration on the website, is that how they're all named under? Uh, everybody uses their nickname, um, actually I've had Gruntman for quite a while uh -huh. and Hobbs is just a fan of Calvin and Hobbs, so gives you some personality without, I guess, throwing out your personal information. <laughs> <laughs> Look uh, me up! <laughs> exactly. Oh, you like my case? Here's my address. You know? <laughs> Yeah, that might not be a good idea all the time. Exactly. Especially corrugated with that big heavy metal project. Yeah, a little pricey there. Yeah, well, at least he doesn't have to worry about anybody running away with that one. True, true. Unless Driving they find the away, remote. Maybe. <laughs> so what's the next? Well, you know, what's what's your next modding project going to be, John? Actually, there's some more work on this one I want to do. Um, I want to throw a little bit more industrial feel to it. I'll have some mesh in the window. Uh, a little bit more work to the front. Some custom designed uh, fan grills. Uh, and then my next mod after this will probably be a small form factor. Cool. Um, this is a land rig, but uh, it does weigh in probably 50, 60 pounds, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit I won't be changing seats in. once I get there. It's very cool. Thing. Thanks for having, coming on, John. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was Fellow Modder and founder of Gruntville.com, John Trump. Good stuff, John. Ladies and gentlemen, still to come, Yoshi's latest extreme mod. You want a hint? It goes 200 miles an hour while standing still while he's sitting in it. Plus, up next, find out if your motherboards are up to the snuff for a LAN party. It's coming up on the screen savers continues. Peyton Jones is on the phone from Dallas, Texas. How are you doing, Peyton? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Hey, Peyton. Doing good. How can it's we help you today? That's the best show on earth. Thank you. Namaste. Yes. We can, um, we'll, well, we'll answer any question you want. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> We've right, lost um, it. Well, my friends and I are having a LAN party coming up in a couple of days here, mm -hmm. and we've been looking through the fries section in our newspaper for uh -huh. the excellent computer deals that they have. Mm -hmm. and I notice how you kind of put the quotations around excellent computer deals. <laughs> so do, you, do you guys actually have a fries computer in Dallas? What uh, What now? Did you say it's a fries computer? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, like, they have a fries insert in our paper that has all the deals on it. Right. Yeah. So, no, because we have fries like here in California, and they're legendary for having like the world's meanest salespeople, and they're always trying to push stuff on. Really you. bad customer service. Yeah, <laughs> you know they also it's the only place you can buy you know heat shrink tubing on a Sunday afternoon, but it's a really strange store. So anyhow, sorry, a lot of people don't have fries. like all in the Northeast, like nobody knows what I'm talking about. They've lost the question. Fries. They're like, what was the question? <laughs> anyhow, get on with it. Sorry, Peyton. <laughs> well, um. There there's a few motherboards that on there that I noticed, and it said uh, LAN computer motherboard, and I got really confused. Mm -hmm. and it had all these what look like Ethernet ports that you look, plug into a plug Ethernet cables into, but it was the motherboard. Which right. Excuse me. So I was wondering if there's there's computers specifically for LAN. I mean, I know there is, but ones that are just mobile, but ones that can't connect to the internet just. Well, they, they might have been saying it has integrated LAN, or they right. might have been trying to use the catchphrase LAN party and just sell you on it because you're fond of LAN parties. Yeah, we're that one, uh, like, like I think it's DFI. I know it's DFI that makes one that's like the LAN party Pro 875, right? That's what the box looks like. Hey, it's a cool graphic. It must be fast, you know? So it's actually, oddly <laughs> enough, it's actually not a bad motherboard, but it sounds like when they say, like, LAN computer, do they say if it's an ATX motherboard factor or is it designed for, uh, is it designed for like, rack mount systems? Do they give you any more information? Um, it, it said ATX, but ATX. I mean, it it uh, it was about one hundred and fifty dollars, and what it just really confused me because I'm not. I mean, I guess there's some computers where you plug an Ethernet cable into the back of it, but mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there's computers like that, and what would be the best deal? 
Um, it depends on the, basically, you, you, first you're going to choose your processor, right, whether you're going to use an Intel or an AMD processor. Next thing you're going to decide is, is what you want. What, whichever way you go, whether Intel or AMD, there are tons of motherboards now that include, as you know, Yoshi was saying, integrated LAN or integrated Ethernet ports, anywhere from, you know, 10, 100 all the way up to gigabit Ethernet right on the motherboard, integrated audio on the motherboard. You generally don't want, if you're doing gaming, you generally don't want your graphics on the motherboard, right, because you're going to want to, it's generally really slow, really bad, not good 3D graphics. You're going to want something with a, at least, you know, an AGP slot. Um, so I would sit down, I'd figure out which, you know, how much money I had for a processor. Uh, you know, I'd figure out I'd want 512 megabytes to a gigabyte of RAM and the best graphics card I can afford. You know, we did a $500 PC. You could probably soup up the graphics a little farther from that. Um, but, yeah, one of the things you want to watch out for, Peyton, and you already kind of, you know, tuned on to this, is people will claim a lot of weird stuff in the advertisements. And a lot of times, you know, basically, hardocp.com is a great place for motherboard reviews. Tom's Hardware is a good place to go. And Antec is a good place to go. See what they have to say about the performance of the motherboards and the features. For a LAN party machine, all you need is, you know, if you've got audio and you've got, you know, Ethernet on the motherboard, that's great. That means you don't have to buy a separate audio card. You don't have to buy a separate Ethernet card. So for, you know, like 100 120 bucks in the motherboard, you can have everything, everything you need integrated into it except for the graphics. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry about whether or not it says LAN party. If it says LAN computer, the only thing I can think is if it has, like, multiple Ethernet ports, that can be nice because then you can run one, you know, you can basically run one for your game and run the game server off of another one. But it sounds like if you're attending somebody else's LAN party, just get a nice basic motherboard, you know, that's got the onboard LAN, uh, Ethernet, and has onboard audio. You should be it's just fine. It's your chipset. And if you want dual channel, make sure you get something with dual channel. Right. <laughs> should we explain what dual channel is? That's uh, next time. Yeah. <laughs> Check out hardocp.com. They've got some great reviews. We'll put up a link to the $500 PC. That's a good PC to emulate for a, an inexpensive gaming system. It should be just fine, Peyton. All right, man. Good stuff. Yep. Here's Dan. He's got some information on where Kevin and Sarah are. That's right. They've left for somewhere. Let's see. If you're close to or you're visiting Tennessee this weekend, stop by our Digital Digs Road Show. As a bonus, you get to meet Kevin and Sarah because they're going to be right around the Nashville area. Uh, now, the Roadshow hits the Cool Springs Gallery in Hex Court in Franklin, Tennessee, this, this weekend, May 15th and 16th, and the, the event runs from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday and noon to 5 on Sunday. Now, for more information and to learn about all the Coast to Coast stops at the Roadshow, go to techtv.com slash digital digs. And don't forget to check out their Mo blogs at kevinrose.com and also check out sarahlinn.com. They're going to put up their uh, Mo blog pictures. So, don't go anywhere. Which mouse? Is the best for the lab for our gaming for gaming. Our lab rats have all the answers to what you're thinking. But after the break, Yoshi's mod. It's dope. You want it? It's coming up. All that when the screensavers continues. Next week, Joshua's back with all the cool gear from this year's Ultimate Gaming Convention, E3. Plus, we're going to show you how to wipe data from your hard drive so nobody can recover it. And on All Call Friday, we do our best to answer your toughest tech questions. That's all next week on The Screensavers. Welcome back to The Screensavers. I'm Yoshi. And I'm Patrick Norton. Coming up in this half hour, we have a number of gaming mice. We're going to tell you whether or not a gaming mouse is any better for gaming. And later on, we're taking another live call. Right now, though, well, some of us are hooked on Far Cry, some on Evercrack. Yoshi's video game genre of choice is racing car simulation. So it should be no surprise that Yoshi decided to build himself a hardcore racing sim chassis. Let's, you know, I think we should show this. Yoshi, why... Did you build this? I don't know if you can see this whole thing at home, folks. This is like eight feet long. It's built out of steel. He's got three monitors hanging off of it. What are you thinking? I, I you know, I, I had like the, the little small chassis at first. You know, I did the whole, oh, I'm going to set up some like bricks in my house and put a monitor up above so it's close. And I'm like, you know, that's just, you know, that was a little ghetto for me. I wanted to take it up a notch, so okay. I wanted a, a full-on system. And what's all, let's, let's run from back to front. What's all built into this thing? Well, basically, you know, of course, you know, we have to have a computer. So I have the uh, Monarch uh, computer systems, the mm -hmm. Hornet, which is an Athlon 64 system. I want something small that would integrate because I wanted everything to be attached to it as much as I right. could. Um, uh, this amp right here is actually 
powering my uh, Clark Synthesis transducer, which we'll show you in a second. That's it's, the butt kicker. Yeah, so I got 400 watts going just to the butt kicker. We'll explain the butt kicker part yes. in a second. And of course, you know, you got to have a amp for your speaker. So I contacted Denon, got their AVR 5003 reference series flagship. Blah, could blah, you blah, gone blah, blah. a little overkill on the amplifier? I could have. I think I have about 20 connections back there, and I'm using one. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's an amazing <laughs> amplifier, but it's like I know people who got 10 grand into a home feeder that well, don't have that much power. I, I, I want to test that out in a home theater environment too as well down the road. You went for a racing seat. I went for a racing seat from Corbeau. I wanted, I wanted that feel, you know, give you that tucked in, kind of almost even claustrophobic feel, but like, that's part of racing. Now show the butt kicker. That's like the best part. Now if you go down here on the bottom of it, right here, that's a 400 watt transducer. And what that does is it just basically shakes with the bass. It's, it's off the sub channel, so it gives you that immersive tactile sound as they say. I'd try to lift the sub up but I'd probably give myself a hernia. Is this a 15 inch sub? That's a 15 inch RSW15 sub from Klipsch. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's putting out about 2500 watts so you know we, we got some power there. Nomex? Nomex, of course. Nomex shoes, <laughs> Nomex gloves. You know. You're going for the real SUV experience. Well, those are actually my real, my real driving gloves okay. and helmet and all that kind of stuff. Is that like a paddle steering wheel on there? That is a paddle steering wheel. The steering wheel and the pedals are from BRD Simulations, courtesy mm -hmm. of Trinity Racing. And basically, they're a company out of England that makes some just really, really high-end pedals. The pedals are the Speed 7 Series, and it's the Pro V2 wheel. And, uh, you know, you're, if you're looking for the ultimate... Take no prisoners in uh, accurate pedals and steering wheels. This is what it's at. Right what, now. What's the set of steering wheel and pedals like? I mean, they're amazing. You it's like get about eight hundred bucks a set. Wow! So you're you're not getting a little you know hundred dollar set from CompUSA. The monitors? The monitors are from 9X Media. These are their 21 inch series. They they sell them like three, four, 10, 16. They'll do whatever configuration you want. I actually have a set of 30s on the way. So you know we'll have to do an upgrade when uh, when we have the 30s the coming down here. And the, how and the you speakers, of course, are the Cinema 8s from Clips also. Is this, all, is this drawn over mandrel steel or is it like chrome it's, uh, it's tube steel. It's one and three quarters inch. It's a real thin wall, kind of like exhaust tubing because I wanted right. to be light enough to work with. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to lift the thing when I needed to you know, do a weld on the bottom or drill it out. You know, mix some diamond plate in because I mm -hmm. filled it, accented it, you know, did that on the floor. Um, other than that, uh, it was a lot of cutting, it was a lot of uh, band sawing, which I actually bought a metal band saw for this project. There's, because there's got to be like 30 joints in here. So we actually have the stills up. Yeah, I, you know, the first still here, that's, you know, the seat had to go in my car for a while with the five-point harness just to test and make sure it was an acceptable seat for my, you know, particular application. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, there's my pile of steel as it started. You can see covered in rust. It was just, you know, second steel, so it was nice and cheap. I started by making the bracket for the seat, which is just square stock, and then I kind of started laying out the tubing and the pattern that I was going to have. I, I did it all ad hoc. I didn't follow my normal rules. I was going to say, like, Yoshi's rule of modding is to figure out what yeah, you're doing first. Yeah, so that, that's why I was, like, sitting in the seat there, and I'd sit in it, then I'd measure it, and I'd put prop things up, tack it in place, cut, Is that an arc tack. welder we saw in that last picture? That was an arc It's a MIG welder. It's oh, it is a MIG it's welder. It's gasless. It's not a gas shielded. Um, that's when you can see the back of the shelf starting to come together there, and that's mm -hmm. so you know when my welds are getting a little better as it's going on in the process. This is your first the welding monitor, project. My right? very first welding project. Wow. Actually, I kind of taught myself through reading online and talking to a few people that knew. But very cool. All very stuff. And, and bringing of course, it to here. Bringing it to here. Um, I got a lot of really weird looks driving down the freeway with this strapped to the roof of my car. I think. <laughs> yeah, just just a couple. What was the, the biggest problem you ran into in, in design? The biggest it? problem was the fact that I did it seat of the pants. <laughs> I had to remake about four or five sections of it completely and cut it off, re-weld it. Didn't cut off well, okay, mm -hmm. cut it all off and start over. Um, it's so like fabbing a roll cage. <laughs> yeah, I'd recommend, you know, really mock it up at least first before you start going straight to metal. And the monitors have been a little bit of a problem. Not the monitors, Not the but, monitors. but getting the video. Getting the video. Three. I wanted the video to span all three monitors. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't able to get a, one of the Matrox Parhelia cards in in time, which mm -hmm. do work with some of the games that way. So I was trying to, you know, NVIDIA 5950 and a PCI FX52. It just they Not they work them. great, but they don't span the game across all three. Got so it. I'm gonna have to. Uh, if anyone has any tips on how to get those to work that way, I'd greatly appreciate them. Um, other than that, I'm going to have to maybe go to one of the Matrox cars so I can have my immersive experience. Thank you, Yoshi. You're going to climb in and do this. We're going to tell people where to find this. To get the whole scoop on Yoshi's racing sim madness, head on over to thescreensavers.com. He's going to fire up the beast. Right now, though, we're going to check in with Leo over at the bench. He's got a quick tip for us. Leo?
Hey, I want to tell you about Squid today. No, not Calamari, although I like Calamari. This is Squid, the web proxy cache, a program that comes with most distributions of Linux. It's used by Internet service providers and big network managers to speed up Internet access. You can use it on your system, too. Squid is a web proxy cache. I know you're familiar with the idea of a browser cache. The idea is it, it saves data like pictures and, 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 and heavy data from websites that you visit. And if you go back to that site and it hasn't changed, it just loads it from the hard drive instead of trying to download it again over the Internet. That could speed your browsing up by two or three times, really make a big difference. Well, Squid does that for a whole network. And you'll benefit because everybody who surfs, every page that's gone to by everybody on the network is saved on a Squid cache. So if somebody goes to one site and you go there later, you'll get there very much more quickly. It's a really great thing. It actually does a lot more. The nice thing about Squid is you probably already have it if you have Linux. All you have to do is type, where is Squid? And your Linux box will tell you where Squid's stored, usually in the user sbin library. You can look at the Squid uh, configuration uh, uh, file by going to etc squid and editing it. I'm going to use vim to edit squid.conf. The nice thing about Squid is you don't really have to modify the configuration file. The only thing you might want to change is the uh, the uh, port that it uses. It uses by default 3123. You might want to change that to 8080. That's kind of more standard proxy port. Then or 3128, I guess, is what it uses. And then uh, once you've once you've done that, you start Squid up, and you'll have to point your browsers to use Squid. I've got a link to an automatic JavaScript configuration utility that'll do that. Once the browsers are using that proxy server, you're going to see a big improvement on your network across the board. But that's not all Squid does. Next time, I'm going to show you how you can use Squid to block sites and to slow down that guy who's hogging all your bandwidth down the hall. Stay, uh, we'll show you all that now, next time. Back to you guys. Stay where you are. We're going to be answering more of your tough questions with another live call. But up next, it's a seven-mouse shootout. Find out which gaming mouse is right for you from 15 to who knows how much when the screen savers continues. G4 Tech TV, coming May 28th. Stay connected. Is that amazing or what? Right now it's time to check with the fine folks over at Tech Live to see what's coming up tonight. Well... Let's talk about TV Guide Gone Wild. Reviews of your favorite shows written with an edge. Tonight on Tech Live, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to be hanging out with Couch Potatoes, hired to write ruthless recaps of TV's hottest shows. Can you imagine that? For a website called Television Without Pity. You may have heard of it, but now you're going to see it. It's an awesome website. Oh, you've been there before, Patrick. Oh, once or twice. You've written for that before. No, but uh, you know what? I can always aspire to. You, I, I, I'm sure you got some buttes in there. Is that on uh, Tech Live tonight? Yeah, oddly enough, when Tech Live is... Uh, right after the screensavers. Oddly enough, right after the screensavers. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Leary, Tech Live tonight, right <laughs> Thanks, after guys. this show. All right. Thanks, Chris. Right now, let's check in with Joshua. He's got some gaming mice. That's right. No longer does the avid gamer use standard components to play. We all know that. There's gaming monitors and keyboards and mouse pads and, of course, mice. So we have technical analyst and our favorite lab rat, my favorite lab rat, here to explain what sets these apart from a regular mouse. Hey, how are you? So you were at E3 all week. I was at E3 all week, so we've been talking gaming and been infused with games. So let's talk about gaming mice. Okay. Number one. Well, if you want the, oh, we're just going to cut right to the chase. What yes. is the best optical mouse right. I've ever held? It's Logitech's new MX510. This little baby right here. It's an update to their 500, the MX500 mm -hmm. series, and which is one I currently own. And I've got to say, the uh, the main improvement they did was increase the power of the imager, how fast it actually takes images of the surface, which they measure in megapixels, much like a camera. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is bump it up about another megapixel per second over the 510. What that does for you, it means it basically tracks as fast as you can move your hand, which in, if you want to do a quick 180 or something like that, it's not going to suddenly jump the mouse to the top or the bottom of the screen, which Make usually either... Sense. If you flick a mouse that can't handle fast movements, it'll usually dive the cursor to the top or the bottom, which oh, means you're looking up at the sky or looking down at your feet. Okay. That's, that's a dead giveaway of slow imaging. So that rate. kind of stuff, is that what differ, what, what, how a regular mouse is going to differ from a gaming mouse thing? Definitely. It's, it's not only should it be able to keep up with your hand, but it should be uh, comfortable, too, as well as offering the buttons you like, either an ambidextrous design if you're left or right-handed, or uh, maybe you like some additional features, like you have to have a thumb button for right. 
finding Well, that's one thing. Like, so, some mice are real small in my hand, or they don't feel right, or, or they have a weird bulge in the wrong place. Everyone's different. It really comes down to you actually putting your hand on a pointing device. If you you got to make sure it fits. It's just like anything, like shoes. Right. You know, that's why it's so hard to buy shoes. Over and the, they just had gaming email. shoes. What's the okay. next one? Next one, actually, if you needed an ambidextrous design and Logitech, this is also one of their uh, MX series. That's the okay. uh, image series. This is the 310 model. A little bit cheaper, about $20 cheaper. And it's ambidextrous, like I said. And it also includes a thumb button on either side. A little bit lighter than the 510 model, and, and it also offers a pretty nice, it doesn't have the comfortable rubberized grips that the 510 model does, but for good value and the ambidextrous where you can use left or right hand just as easy, it works just great. Now, one thing that's nice about these the buttons, these mice that have the buttons on the side is a lot of the games take advantage of all the extra buttons on a mouse. Definitely, and that's something we'll, we should probably talk about, too, is drivers. One way or another, uh, I, for gaming, I say don't don't bother with the drivers. When you just plug any USB mouse into a computer, it'll use the built-in Windows support. And that basically assigns mouse buttons one through however many are on there as button one, button two, button three. And just about every game will support that nowadays, so you can bind things individually. What happens is when you install software, it'll actually reconfigure it to how the software wants the button to be. So yeah, that, we had that problem so with that, the LAN party machines. So that button five would suddenly become, say, left keyboard shift, mm -hmm. which the game was already using that for something else in the first place, and suddenly it just becomes very difficult to remap everything the way you wanted it. and It's just painful. So if you are a gamer, I say avoid it. Hopefully right. they'll just put a switch in the driver right, and just, just turn it back on. and forth. It's because some people in, like, office applications and productivity suites, it's nice to have all the additional features for, like, forward and backward on a web page or bring up my current But for gaming, you don't need But for gaming, nah. This mouse. Well, actually, let's... Uh, oh, this, oh, I yes. skipped twice. Microsoft's latest optical design, the okay. Intel Mouse Explorer 4.0. Also, like Logitech, their imaging hardware is fast enough to keep up with your hand. Sweet, sweet mouse. Very comfortable. And it has this incredible scroll wheel. That's a great wheel. Which, it is great because it's completely smooth. There's no ratcheting action, and it tilts left and right. So, for side-scrolling through documents. But if you're, but it doesn't have ratcheting, so like if you're rolling, skipping through guns or something, it would be hard to... Therein lies to the big problem. Okay. Uh, for games like Unreal Tournament 2004, as you try to switch a weapon, if you use the scroll wheel to switch weapons, you'll find that you'll push it forward a little bit, nothing might happen, then you push it forward a little more, and then suddenly it's oh, two or three. Everything. And after about two or three times, you're just like, okay, I just can't <laughs> do it. And the drivers don't allow you to bind the left and right, uh, the scroll sideways to specific buttons either, so you couldn't even do it in that yeah. fashion as well. Next awesome one? mouse for everything else. We've got to move you along. Okay. You know too much, Robert. You just Patrick shut Gordon. up and keep going. Patrick Gordon <laughs> clued me in. It's like, hey, look, for 20 bucks, you can get Microsoft's regular optical scroll wheel mouse. Offers almost identical performance to the regular one, but it includes, hey, the ratcheting motion that your custom and love. And you can find it for less than 20 bucks. All these are optical for. so far. Yeah. I, ball mice, there ball are a few out there that are worth maybe checking out if you're into it. You know, it's a preference thing, but... In this day and age, it's just easy. You don't have to deal with the cleaning issues. You don't have to open it up and scrape them out. Right. Uh, there's less wear and tear. And honestly, unless the buttons break, this should last forever. Right. Yeah. What's this weird one? This is the something a company in Berkeley sent me. You can check it out at GamingMouse.com. Figures com. those hippies out there making, hey, but you know making what? those weird mice. This one's, a, this one's arguably the most unique. First, it's the way you hold it. It's the RTR 720. And the key is, is that... It's basically made to be held with two fingers like that, mm -hmm. and there's a hypersensitive, three hypersensitive buttons along the side where this finger is right here. Hmm. And with 5,000 actuation, which is <laughs> not a lot of space, it's really easy. just a little quick squeeze right there. And there's actually you can see where that little red dot is that kind of mark where the. You it so you hold it and slide it around. Yeah, it's so basically Weird. you're working it like that, and you leave one finger up on top. Highly programmable, customizable. Cool. They include all the software you need to not only bind button presses but button releases, scripted functions, macros, things like that. Awesome. If you are tired of large mice, every mouse seems too large for you, it's mm -hmm. not sensitive enough, that might be the one. That is something worth checking out. What about this little sleek looking one here? The Razor? Razor's latest optical. It is the, most people are familiar with their boomer mice, which are their big ball mice. Mm -hmm. Up to 2,000, 2,100 DPI in that case. This is a 1,000 DPI optical mouse. Pretty good, but I just didn't find it could keep up with very quick hand movements. Overall, I, I like the shape. It's very lightweight. It's ambidextrous. Only has the regular two buttons in the scroll wheel, and there's no, no thumb buttons. Mm. If that's important to you, you'd probably want to look elsewhere. And then we got this last one just for fun. Yoshi modded a mouse and put a fan in a while yeah. back. This is an actual production. Nyko's famous for their airflow controllers. This is the ver their version of a mouse that contains a little fan inside that blows Keep out. Your hand. Keeps nice your hand cool. cool, and it's adjustable, three different fan speeds. Fifteen bucks, too, which is in that's an 800 not, that, That's nothing mouse. for a little modern, fun little mouse. Not at all. But your Works favorite really well. is the maroon bugger down there on the end. High performance holographic red-colored MX-510. It comes in a couple different colors, but for comfort, performance, speed, features, 
hard to beat. Cool. We're going to have to have you do a roundup of gaming keyboards. Sure. For us sometime. I, I have it. That's the next one. I've like got a fifteen dollars. Okay, got to be quiet. <laughs> We're talking. For a link to Robert's article, go to the screensavers.com. Back to you guys. Thank you, Joshua and Robert. Coming up after the break, find out how to mod your cable box, or can you? We're going to talk about that right after these messages. Be sure to catch Monday's show. I'm under Saul Grimm and the stuff. By with some of his amazing inventions. Make sure you've got all your data on your well, all the data on your hard drive unrecoverable. Before you sell your computer, plus Kevin compares performance of Windows XP on an Apple PowerBook compared to a Windows PC running Windows XP. It's all coming up on Monday's show. Lots of good stuff. Right now, Lewis joins us on the phone from Long Beach, California. Hey, Lewis. What's up? Hey. Oh, uh, hi. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to know if I could mod my cable box up the other channels. So you want to get the channels you're not paying for. Is this what you're asking? Yeah. So you want to know how to mod your cable box with a D-scrambler. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, uh, we are a cable television program, and, and uh, you know, the only thing that's more likely to get us thrown into jail than telling you how to crack DVDs is probably telling you how to descramble the, the coded signals uh, on, your, on your system. However, Lewis, have you been on Google lately? Yeah. <laughs> I bet with some careful searching, you can figure out some great ways to hack cable service and probably go to jail in the process, depending on how on top of it your local cable provider is. So it depends on how ambitious you are, though. Yeah, or how ambitious they are. I mean, basically what you're talking about doing, Lewis, is theft of service. It's, it's not uncommon. I've known a number of individuals who have thrown $20 to the cable guy to get stuff accidentally turned on. Do yourself a favor. Don't do it, man. It's, you know, it's bad karma, and it's also likely to get yourself in big trouble with your local cable company. They have bigger lawyers than you do. <laughs> he hung up on us. Oh, no. Nah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, He's like, well, I didn't get yeah. Anyhow, yeah, seriously, man, pay All the right. money, get together with your friends. Good All luck. Right. Uh-oh. <laughs> Stay where you are, assuming we're still here. We're going to check our inbox and see what's on your minds. Coming up when the screensavers continue. It's time for emails. What you got, Sue? Sue? Hi. Time for some final emails, huh, fellas? Yeah. Okay. This guy wants. Uh, this female wants to know. Help! I just got this HP for Mum's Day, and how can I protect? How can I protect it and me from the internet bad guys? Oh man, internet bad guys. You want to put a firewall on it? If you have a broadband connection, we highly recommend getting something like a Linksys router, a real simple box. If not, we have some links to free firewalls up on the website, and you also want to run an antivirus. AVG's antivirus from Greasoft, G R I S O F T dot com, is a great one for free. If you get something like Norton antivirus, uh, make sure you update it because they've been having uh, some critical updates that need to be in place if it's going to actually protect your system. Yeah, yeah. real quick, uh, John Crump wanted us to thank his uh, senior editors, Dick Nervous and Sky, the best female modder in the world. Ooh, props to them for keeping his website up. It's a good <laughs> thing. Do we have time for more? Sure. Okay. This, uh, this is definitely a Yoshi question if I've ever heard one. Uh, I'm building a new PC, and I'd like to make it as quiet as possible. I want to go serial ATA. What do you suggest? Ooh, quiet serial ATA drives. Um, I like the Seagate, the the Barracuda fives. Is that the one with like the serial bearing drives or the yeah, they they're the liquid bearing drives, and they also have that foam on the bottom helps you know keep the sound a little bit a little they're better. Really quiet. Um, you might want to get a cage that actually suspends the drive. That's mm -hmm. a lot of the noise comes from the drive making noise going to the metal and that just transmitting to the side panels. So. You know, the funny thing is, if you haven't bought a drive in a couple of years, almost all hard drives, even the 10,000 RPM Raptors, are much much quieter than than they used to be in the past. But fluid bearing. Blueberry. He's getting ready to go play with the racing game. I, I'm just jonesing for it. Do we have, do we have time for one more question? <laughs> sure do. Okay, this uh, student at UC Davis, uh, they have an unencrypted network out there. Beware, UC Davis students. Anyways, um, so he wants to know if he goes onto a banking site, is are the packets going to be able to, are they going to be able to, ca excuse me, are they going to be captured? The packets? <laughs> okay, um, so like, you got a network, right? Basically, if you're running over a Wi-Fi network, what's happened is the connection is between your browser and the secure server at the other end, right? So you're already running over an over net open network if it's running over the Internet somewhere between UC Davis and your bank. Trust me, it is. As long as you got the little lock in the corner, that means you've got uh, the security turned on and you have a secure connection between you and whoever you're running that connection with. Yoshi, I think you've waited long enough. Okay, thank I'm you. going over. He's going to sprint yes. over. <laughs> thank you. Got a race, got a race.
Got a race. We want to thank everybody on the screen series. We want to thank John from Gruntville for coming out here. And Yoshi, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the volume turned down because otherwise this thing would probably do some damage. Thanks again to John Crump and Robert Aaron. We'll see you next time. Have a great night.